Up next on the show, we have David Marmer and Nicole Bloom with 1BR, a thriller about housing, about moving to LA, and about finding yourself. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would love for you to kind of go into a bit of the backstory of how this project came into being, because it's such a singular vision of horror in the modern age. Um, well, I, I mean, like probably most independent productions, it had a kind of a torturous uh, path into existence. But the genesis of it really was my own personal experiences when I moved to Los Angeles uh, in my 20s. Um, very much like Sarah, you know, kind of pursuing a dream, um, but also very lonely and, and isolated and kind of alienated. And uh, I moved into an apartment complex and I didn't know anybody and it was just, I found it to be a very weird world where you're, you know, packed in with all sorts of people and you don't really know any of them. Um, and so that got my wheels turning and that was really the beginning of it. Because I feel like there's a bit of tension, too, of this insecurity of being in such an unfamiliar place and being a little bit afraid, but also this kind of yearning to be accepted by that same community that is maybe something that you're kind of afraid of as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is that tension. I mean, that, that I think that, like, in some ways is, is the, the central theme that I was most interested in exploring is this idea of kind of... Um, selflessness versus um, being true to your to your own dreams and your own self um, finding your own strength and in, in uh, you know, another way to put it um, so yeah I think that you, you, you hit the nail on the head with that and uh, yeah, yeah and of course that's what Nicole did such a beautiful job she of did. embodying well I was about to say like speaking of nails to the head <laughs> nails in the hand Nicole you had a very challenging role I believe like it's very internalized but then you have like all this physical aspect as well mm -hmm. uh, how did you kind of approach the role and did you find any of it particularly challenging yeah I mean there were definitely aspects that you know having read the script I knew it was going to be intense um, but David and I were fortunate to have some time together before we started shooting limited but but it was um, it was super helpful because we were able to kind of talk through the arc we were able to discuss how those you know more more difficult um, scenes were going to be shot, how they were going to feel. Um, so, you know, he was very supportive in, in helping me through that. The rest of the cast was, the crew was amazing, and so it never felt too overwhelming. But it certainly, it was, it was trying at times, <laughs> but it was fun. Not fun. <laughs> fun because everyone was so supportive, and, yeah. you know, once we stopped rolling, everything was very lighthearted and, and much easier. I mean, that's amazing. And I would love to know, it's like the ensemble itself is so incredible. And it's such an unusual cast because it's so diverse. And mm -hmm. you have people from so many different kind of like influences and uh, experiences. Can you talk about working together as a cast and bringing everyone on the same page? Yeah, I feel like everyone came together. We were very fortunate. Um, I mean, obviously, they did a great job with casting, and then and then the whole cast was very supportive, and, and we all kind of just clicked right away. You know, some of them I was meeting right before we shot our first scene, and it was just kind of like we had time together offset, and, and we all kind of got to know each other. And so, you know, the way that the script was written was really helpful in that sense, but also we were lucky to have such wonderful people involved. Yeah, it was... Um you know, it's one of these things where you, you just get lucky, right? You, you, you do your best to find the best people for the, for the roles and also people that you feel like are going to work well with each other. But on a production like this, you don't have time to bring in all different combinations of people and test them together and so forth. And so it's a real, you know, there, there's a real moment of uh, uh, nervousness when you first walk on set. But you know, it was, as Nicole said, like, it's, it's, a, it's a really supportive cast. A good number of them came to the festival with us, and we were all, we, you know, we've been having lunch and Yeah, and it's been really together. fun to be back together. Yeah. Um, I mean, it really shows in the film, like, there is, like, a sense of community, too, like, especially it's part of the importance of where things are going. But what is also amazing is the production design. Is it an actual set, or did you find a location or a combination? It's a combination. So we had we were lucky enough to have a really amazing production designer named Ricardo Jatan, who, um, you know, put it all together. He brought an amazing team, and you know, with with very few resources, he he did a huge amount. So um, the basic 
situation was we had, for all our exteriors, we had uh, an apartment complex in Chatsworth, which is up in the valley. Um, and it was, a, it was a working apartment complex with residents. And so we were working around the residents, um, uh, which was its own challenge. <laughs> Um, but they were all actually very welcoming, um, and it was you know it was a it was a, a positive experience being there. Um, and then uh, and then we moved to do all the interiors. We basically built uh, one set um, that was it was an apartment. You know it had a living room, a kitchen, and a bedroom and, and a bathroom, and that stood in for all. You see four different apartments in the in the movie, and they would just redress it for each different. Apartment um, yeah. and wow. it was wild. Yeah, they did such a good such job. Such a good job. Like I, you know, I was there. Obviously, we were all there. And then I edited the the movie, and you know, I watch it now, and I can forget, you know, if I'm not thinking about it, that those are the exact same place. And so then, in what order are you actually shooting? Because it sounds pretty complex. If you're shooting chronologically, it doesn't. Yeah, seem no, possible. we were not yeah. able to do that. Um, you know, it's I always. I, I like to shoot as chronologically as possible because you know I, I have um, a background in theater and I have some some acting experience although I'm, I'm not good at it um, <laughs> but enough to know that like it's difficult when you're shooting mm -hmm. out of sequence yeah. for an actor especially in something as intense as this like right. to be jumping all over the arc is is very difficult but the logistics of it were we basically had to shoot out all of Sarah's apartment all of apartment 209 first and it, there's de several different states of the apartment, right? So yeah. it's, she's, it's when it's bare and they're showing it, and then it's when she's starting to move in and her boxes are there, and then it's fully moved in, and then it's the, the special setup in the middle of the movie, right? <laughs> Which we had a couple of days to shoot that. So we would, we would just shoot it in states. And then when we were all done with Sarah's apartment, then we had one day each with Lester's apartment, Miss Stanhope's apartment, and the classroom. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd like to thank both of you so much, uh, David, uh, David Marmer and Nicole Bloom with 1BR. It was a pleasure. Uh, you had your world premiere at Fantasia. The audience went crazy, and I'm sure the rest of the world is super excited to see it. <laughs> Hope thank so. You. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Uh, that was a Fantasia talk show YouTube exclusive. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. It was uh, absolutely amazing. I, uh, I've never seen it with an audience yet um, and was incredibly nervous and I couldn't have been more thrilled like the the Fantasia audience was so supportive and into it and gasping and laughing at the right moments not the wrong moments. This is my first time seeing the film actually all the way through um, so it was super exciting in general um, and then yeah I think it was fun to watch with an audience you know people um, found humor in places that I I don't know, when you're reading it, when you're so immersed in it, when you're crying and getting your hands nailed to a wall, it's, uh, it's a little hard to um, find the humor, but, but it, you know, it played, it played really nicely.